Hello everyone and welcome back to the Maker's Workbench. I'm your host Charles and in this first episode of our Design It Build It series I'm going to show you how to design a segmented ring rubber band clamping jig in Fusion 360 and then how to prepare it for cutting on my X-Carve CNC. So stick around! <music> The Maker's Workbench and this episode of Design and Build It is brought to you by Inventables, makers of the X-Carve, and by Drillbits Unlimited, my go-to source for carbide end mills, router, and drill bits. Visit them today at drillbitsunlimited.com. Before we get started, I wanted to properly introduce this new series. I'm calling it Design It and Build It because that's how it will work. I will be building two projects per month and splitting each project into two episodes. The first episode will be focused on the process I go through when designing a project that will have some or all of its components built on a CNC or 3D printer, and the second episode will center around the actual build process and how to assemble the project once the CNC work is finished. Some videos may have three episodes depending on if that project warrants a third install to cover installing electrical components. This series is loosely based on the concept that John Saunders over at NYC CNC has pioneered with his Wednesday Widget series. I've decided to emulate his format because although I am not a machinist, I watch every single Wednesday Widget episode he publishes because the process of taking a project from the design stage to a physical form is immensely interesting to me. And I have learned a lot of tricks from him in using Fusion 360s from the series. So I want to give a big shout out to John for the inspiration he gave me to start this series. And if you have not seen his channel, you can find a link to it in the description below. So let's get started. Okay, let's get started designing this jig. I'm going to be using Fusion 360. Um, you can use any program you want if you're following along, but since I'm doing this in Fusion 360, you probably want to follow along in Fusion 360 as well. If you don't have Fusion 360, you can download it on the Autodesk website. It's free for makers or businesses that make under $100,000 a year, I think. Don't hold me to that. Um, just check for yourself. But I do know they have a free version because that's what I'm using. So to get started, we're going to create a sketch and we're going to start on a plane. Um, we're going to create a two-point rectangle and you can just do that by clicking R or clicking up here and I'm just gonna draw a box doesn't matter what size the box is because we're gonna change the dimensions now to do that we're gonna press D for dimension drag our dimension somewhere and we're gonna make that 16 inches and then we're gonna do the same here D for dimension 16 inches okay there's our box now we want to find the center point of this box and that's pretty easy to do. We're just going to highlight a line on one side, click O for offset, and we're going to offset it by 8 inches. We're going to do the same thing at the top. Highlight the line by clicking on it, and then hit O for offset. And then we're going to offset it by 8 inches. So there's the center of our box. We don't need these dimension lines, so I'm going to get rid of them for now. And we're going to move on. So now we have these lines in the middle but I want these lines to be construction lines so there's a couple ways you can do that you can highlight the line you want right click on it and then select normal slash construction or you can just highlight the line and hit X on your keyboard same thing with the other line I hit X now we have construction lines so our we're gonna call this this square our our base material because it's it's the same size that our jig is gonna be so now that we have the center point of our base material, we need to add several concentric circles starting at two inches and working our way up to 14 inches. The reason we're going to 14 inches is my lathe will only swing up to a 12 inch uh, blank. And because of that, I won't be making any segmented rings right now that are larger than 12 inches. So the 14 inch ring, which is the largest on this piece, will allow me enough room to assemble with glue um, the the segmented ring and then I'll be able to remove the pins or lift up the rubber band and let it uh, squeeze the blank together or squeeze the segmented pieces together um, that gives me about an inch all the way around the segmented ring to work so I think it'll work out fine so first thing we're gonna do is start with our 14 inch circle to do a circle to draw a circle we're gonna hit C for circle and that just lets us do a center diameter circle so meaning we start at the center point and we drag out and then we can type 
the what we want our circle to be so 14 inches and then I'm gonna delete that dimension line we're gonna do the same thing until we get down to two inches deleting the dimension lines along the way I'm gonna speed this up and I'll be back when we're done and we're gonna finish up with our two inch circle I'm not sure if I will ever use two inches but I want to have it there just in case I need it that way if I need to build like a one inch little segmented ring for the bottom of my bowl or whatever I'm building then I have the ability to do it it's better to get it in now than not have it when I need it so now that all of our circles are there we need to add 16 pegs around the diameter of each circle um, to allow us uh, somewhere to stretch the rubber band around and I'm gonna use quarter inch dowels for that some people use uh, finishing nails I'm just gonna use quarter inch dowels because I have a bunch left over from a previous project and I don't want them to go to waste so that means we need a quarter inch hole every 22 and a half degrees around the circumference of the circle in a past life when I was a SketchUp fanatic I would have done it someone something like this where I would have drawn each construction line at the angle I needed it to be to intersect with where the uh, quarter inch hole was going to go and that takes a long time and I did that here in fusion just to show you what you could do to get to make this work it kind of looks like a spider web but in fusion and other uh, I guess more well refined CAD um, applications there's an easier way to do it so the first thing we need to do to do this is we need to draw a circle that's one quarter inch in diameter on each one of these circles okay so now that we have those circles drawn I'm gonna go back again and I'm just going to delete up all the, delete all of the dimension lines because if we leave the dimensions and their corresponding markers on the on this sketch when we export it as a DXF those will remain in the DXF and cause us issues when we're setting up the tool paths for our CNC machining um, so like I said previously I would have done something like this where I draw where I drew out each construction line but in fusion there's a faster and easier way to do it um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in until I have the top circle here and the center point here what we're gonna do here is we're gonna click sketch and we're gonna go to circular pattern and for our object I'm going to click this circle I have to click the circle if I click the center of the circle it doesn't work click the outside of the circle and then for the center point I'm going to click the middle of our board then I'm gonna leave the type to a full circle you can do full there's a bunch of stuff you do full circle um, I don't remember what suppress means but I'm leaving it checked and our quantity we're going to enter 16 as you can see that added 16 circles equally spaced at 22 and a half degrees all the way around our circle so just hit enter and there you have it we're gonna do the same thing for the others and I'm just gonna do that really quick and speed it up in editing and I'll be back and we're here at our final circle so what I'm going to do for this circle since it's so small is we're only going to add eight uh, holes around it so we do the same thing we select circular pattern select the outside of our circle click the center point select the center point and now we just want to add eight and there we have it okay the next thing we need to do is add a 5 16th of an inch diameter hole dead in the center what this is going to allow me to do is add a standard one quarter inch 20 t-nut there and I'll be able to thread in a piece of threaded rod and not only will this be able to use rubber bands to clamp 
my segments together during glue up, then I'll be able to take and stack each segmented ring with a board and a knob on top and use it as a clamp to glue the rings together as well. So again, just C for circle. And for those of you following along using the decimal system, 5 sixteenths of an inch is 0.3125. And as always, we have to go in and take the little annoying uh, dimension out, and we're good. Okay, so now that we have this done, we're almost ready to move it into Adobe Illustrator and get it ready for exportation from a DXF file to an SVG file. But before we do that, I want to go through and delete each one of these little lines that are inside these circles and this becomes important later um, but before we can do that we need to delete our construction lines here in the middle so just highlight your construction line and hit the delete key there is no simple way to do this other than hitting T for trim and going through and clicking on each line it is a very tedious time-consuming process and I'm not going to make you sit here and watch all of it. I'm going to speed this up and I'll be back in just a few seconds. Okay, and we're on our final row. I do want to point out one thing. Um, when you're doing the trim function, let's say when uh, I click this, you see it pops up with a constraint and or dimensions were removed during operation. That means that I broke um, the dimension from this point to this point. Um, it's not that big of a deal, and when we're doing it for this purpose, don't worry about it. Okay, so we have all of that done. Now we are ready to uh, move this over to Adobe Illustrator and then into the software we're going to use to prepare it for uh, use on our CNC machine. So to export this as a DXF, um, there's a couple things we need to do really quick. And one of those things is to delete that. I don't know where that little dimension came from. And just delete, delete our outer dimensions because those will get carried over if we don't. So to export this as a DXF, we need to open our sketch. Right click on sketch 1 and click save as DXF. Now you see that I've already done this. Um, I found some problems and that's why we're taking the steps we're taking now. So I'm exporting that. Now I'm going to open Adobe Illustrator. Okay, now we're in Adobe Illustrator and what we want to do now is open. And you see I have a bunch of footage and files already in this folder, but uh, don't worry about any of that. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain, please. So we're going to click here on our DXF file. We're going to set it to original size. The scale is going to be one unit equals one inch. And that's it. Click OK. And there you see our design except our artboard is very small so to change the size of our artboard we want to come over to the tools menu and click on artboard tool and we're just going to drag this to our corners just make sure everything lines up drag it drop it and you're good okay so now there's nothing else we need to do to this file other than export it. So we're going to export. I'm sorry, we're going to save it in Illustrator. Save as. We're going to change the file type to an SVG. And we're going to click Save. Now, I like to save my stuff as a tiny SVG 1.1. I don't think it really matters much. This is just what I've always used. So. Once we have tiny SVG 1.1 selected, our font type is going to be SVG, subsetting none, options, none of that, just everything's fine, default from the factory. Just click OK. And now it is saved. 
Okay, so here is the file that you saw in the opening of the video. So let's recreate the rest of these elements, the uh, engraving elements here, and the segmented ring stuff, um, as well as the text. So I'm just going to create a new file in Easel. If you're unfamiliar with Easel, Easel is the control software used for some of the Shape Oko models as well as the X-Carve. I'm going to be using an X-Carve to cut this out, so that's why I'm using Easel. Um, the first thing I need to do is set up my material. So we're going to go 16 inches by 16 inches, and it's going to be 3 quarters of an inch thick since I'll be using 3 quarter inch plywood. We're going to leave it on birch plywood, but our bit is going to be a 1 16th inch spiral upcut bit. When I cut this out in the next video, you're going to see me using a spiral downcut bit, and that's because that's what I have on hand. I have about 20 of them, and until I run out of them, I won't be buying any new ones. So now that we have all of that done, we can come over and import our file. Before we import our file, I'm just going to make this smaller, and we're going to zoom out a little. And now we'll click import SVG and we'll import our SVG. So here we go. This is our file. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're deleting the bounding box because otherwise it would try to cut the edges of our material and our material is already going to be cut square on the table saw or by some means. So now we're going to add in the text that we want to engrave and then prepare the actual cut elements of this project for machining on the X-Carve. I'm just going to zoom in. And outside of each of our rings here, I would like to add the size that is the ring before it. So this ring is going to be two inches. Um, I'm using the text in easel instead of setting it up in Fusion 360 or Illustrator because uh, Illustrator has issues exporting text from DXF that were saved in Fusion 360. It breaks the text up into tens of thousands of little bitty lines and it just is a nightmare when you export it into something like uh, Easel from an SVG file. Um, I would be also using fonts in Illustrator to set my engraving, but right now Easel has a problem importing fonts that were saved as an SVG. Um, not sure why that is. I'm hoping that Inventables will get it fixed soon, but for now, um, I'm just going to add the text in from uh, Easel here. I feel that it works fine and the Beamio font is nice and bold and works great. When we click that, our text goes down here to the bottom and that's no good. So we're just going to set our text to one or we're going to call this one two inches and now to get our height right we're going to come over here and click shape and we're going to constrain our size to remain uh, the same we're going to set our height to 0.5 or we'll set our width to 0 0.15 0 0.5 Yes, I like the way that looks. And we're gonna, we'll go ahead and while we're doing these, we'll go ahead and set them down to their proper uh, milling size. So again, just highlight them both and we're gonna set them to mill at 1 16th of an inch, which is 0 0.0625. So that's half of one eighth of an inch and you can barely see it there but it is there um, easel changes the color or the I guess the darkness of the element you're cutting based on its depth and now we're just going to control C then control V to copy that so we don't really have to change our size parameters anymore I'm just gonna make it a little darker so I can see it while I position it and to make it darker I just set my cut depth to one quarter of an inch so once I get it positioned then I'm going to change it to this one will be this one's actually going to be six inches this one is going to be four inches if you knew how many times I've messed this up all right and this one is going to be two inches and I'm just going to line the uh, bottom of the uh, 
quotation marks, which denotes inches. I'm going to line that up with this blue layout line here. I like the way that looks. And we're just going to keep moving down the line. Okay. Now that we have that text done, I'm just going to highlight each of these. I'm just going to hold shift and click each one. And we're going to set the depth to 0 0.0625 for one eighth of an inch. Okay. Now I want to add some text at the bottom. I want to add segmented ring rubber band clamping jig to one side. I know that's a mouthful, but I like the way it sounds. So I'm going to do the same thing, text, Beamio, and we'll just resize this in a minute. Segmented ring, now we're going to select it all and we'll come and we'll just drag once we get it selected, we'll drag the corner down to make it smaller. And we'll space it about a half an inch. Just We're just guessing on that, but about a half inch off the corner. And I think that will work. Again, we're going to choose Beamio here. Designed by. And sometimes when I'm designing an easel, if I want to get my letters the same size, I'll kind of sometimes come over and overlap them and just drag them then until I think they're close enough. Beamio. And we'll just type the makers. drag it to make it smaller and again I'm just gonna kinda lay it over one of the other fonts I've already done and now we see that this is a little too big it's gonna overlap a lot there so we're gonna make it a little bit smaller and then we'll make the other text smaller to match I need it to be something like that size. Like that. And this side needs to be just a little smaller to kind of match. Um, these two are going to be engraved at uh, one sixteenth of an inch, so point oh six two five. Same here. Point oh six two five. And here. Point oh six two five. Um, finally, what I would like to do is up here at the top, about an inch in and or about two inches in and one inch down I want to add some holes so I can hang this on my wall or inside a cabinet or something like that so we're just gonna grab two circles and I should have done this in the CAD program but I didn't so two inches over one inch down just a line using the construction lines that they have the layout lines they have in here we'll get it close it doesn't have to be perfect now our shape, we're going to constrain our size and we're going to make it 0.5 and there we go. Now we're just going to take and realign things two inches over, one inch down and just roughly line up the squares. Now I'm going to control C, control V, but it doesn't really matter. Okay. Same thing, two inches over, one inch down get it close that's all it needs to be and those will be through holes at the full depth that will allow me to hang this 
All right, to finish this up, we need to go through, and this is a fairly tedious part of the project, but we need to go through and set each one of these lines between the little circles to engrave at 1 16th of an inch deep. And then we need to set each circle to cut, and then we need to set each circle to cut at 1 half of an inch deep. So in Easel, you can shift click and select multiple items. But if you shift click and you're outside of a bounding box, so if I click here, you see it adds a bounding box around everything in the middle, but you still have to click each element. You have to make sure the four way crosshair is on each element and you have to click it and make sure it gets its own little separate bounding box. The reason this bigger bounding box is important is let's say I click here and then I click here, but I'm not on, I'm not on my bounding box. Then my other selection goes away. But if I have my bounding box, the bigger bounding box, and I click off, it my other selections do not go away. So I like to start here and come over here, then here, oh, and just make sure I have the whole thing covered in a bounding box before I get started. And this is quite frustrating sometimes, if you can't tell. You have to make sure that the center of your four-way crosshair is on the center of that line. Otherwise, it will click off. So now that we have that, let's just go ahead and click all of these. And I'm going to speed this up. And when we're done clicking everything, I'll bring you guys back. Okay, now that that's done, everything is selected except for this one little piece down here. And um, that is because there's this text here, it's on top. I forgot to send it to the back. We'll fix that in a second. There's two things we need to do to this before we move on. So now that we have each one of those pieces selected, we need to select the, uh, the depth of our cut. So that's going to be 0625. So now we need to move this to the back and what we're going to do to do that is we're just going to right click it and send to back now i'll be able to click on this and change my stuff so we're going to set it to 0 0.625 0 0.0625 enter okay now we need to do one more thing and it's tedious as well and I'll speed it up too. So we need to click each circle. Same thing with bounding boxes. The faster we get the bounding box around everything the better life goes. Now we can just highlight everything. And I'll be back once all these are selected. Okay, so now there's a couple things we need to do here. First thing we need to do is right click on one of these and bring them all to the front. Then we need to set them to fill and one quarter inch. I'm sorry, one half inch deep. And there's only one thing left to do. Um, we need to take and click our center circle and we're gonna fill it and we're gonna set it to the full depth. That's it. There is our design. It's all set up and Easel will now be able to generate the tool paths. So let's take a look at it over here to make sure everything is good. Let's just click generate detailed preview. And let's look at our text to make sure all of our text is working. Looks like we're missing the quotation marks on 10, 12, and 14, but it looks like the t rest of the text can be easily cut out. So let's check over here. Yep, 
it looks like the quotation marks on our 10, 12, and 14s are too small. So we're going to try to make them just a little bit bigger so that the, so the, the 16th inch end mill will be able to engrave them. So let's just grab that and we'll make it a little bigger on each side. I'm going to make it darker so I can see what we're doing. Let's see if we can move it a little just to get it to fit in there better. And did that work? If that size worked, then we're just going to copy that over. Let's our, generate our detailed preview. And it did. Okay, so we're just going to set that to depth and then copy it. actually going to make it just a hair smaller. Generate our detailed preview here. It still works. Okay, so our depth on that is 0 .0625. 0 .0625, enter. Now we're just going to copy it, control C. We'll delete this one. We'll delete this one. And we'll paste one. Nope. Control C, Control V. I'm gonna make it a little darker so I can see it to move it and change it to 12. I'm okay with that placement. Change our depth, 0 0.0625. And we'll do one more, Control V. There we go, and we're just going to change it to 1-4. And just to make sure that works, we're going to check our detailed preview again. And it does. So now we're ready to set up the X-Carve and cut this out. Tune in next week for the second installment of this where we will be doing that. If you like this idea, uh, leave me a comment below if you kind of like what I'm doing. Leave me a comment below if you want to see me build something specific and go through this process with it. Let me know in the comment below. As always, if you like my channel in general and want to support me, you can do that in a couple ways. You can click the subscribe button. If you do subscribe to my channel, please click the little bell next to the subscribe button and that will allow you to get notifications to let you know whenever I post something new. Um, you can also support me by giving this video a thumbs up. Um, every time you give videos on YouTube a thumbs up, it indicates a like, which YouTube's algorithm looks at then and then is able to use that like to recommend other videos to you. Um, and it will also help recommend other videos to other people. So you can do that. You can also support me on Patreon. I have a link to my Patreon uh, account in the description below. Um, everything as small as a dollar up to whatever you want to donate helps keep the lights on here at the Maker's Workbench. I do do this full time. I do not have a regular 9 to 5. I create content for a living. Um, so if you want to support me in that and you like the content I create, you know, consider donating something to the cause. Um, I think that's going to wrap up this video. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to watch um, me design this, this clamping board. So I guess I'll see you next week. And as always, hack the world and make awesome.